Want to work in strategy consulting for a top firm? LEK Consulting is hiring now across its U.S. offices. LEK works on exciting growth strategy projects for the world's top companies, serving almost every sector and industry vertical. At LEK, you'll work on fast-paced engagements in small project teams with some of the brightest minds in the industry. If you're looking for the ideal blend of meaningful work and a tight-knit culture, LEK may be the perfect fit for you. To learn about open roles and to apply, click the link in the show notes or go to lek.com. Welcome to this episode of Strategy Simplified. I'm excited to bring to you another conversation with Ellie K. Today with Jen Wu and Justin Craigwell Graham, both managing directors and partners in Ellie K Consulting's Chicago office. Jen and Justin are going to share with us how Ellie K thinks about diversity and share more about the firm's wide range of ED and I initiatives. Jen and Justin have both been pioneers in this area for the firm and are now helping lead and develop the firm even further. Whether you're recruiting or not, this is an important discussion, and it was insightful and encouraging to hear how a leading consultancy is leading the way in this area. I hope you enjoyed the discussion. Justin and Jen, we want to welcome you both to the Strategy Simplified podcast. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you, Stephanie. Of course. Nice to meet you, Stephanie. Justin, would love if you would kick us off and just share a brief summary of your professional background. Of course, happy to start. Uh, my name is Justin Craigwell Graham. I'm a partner and a managing director in the Chicago office of LEK Consulting. Um, I primarily work in the consumer space and more specifically food and beverage. I've been with the firm for about 12 years, started as an associate, made my way throughout the um, all the levels, although I I did separate from the firm for one year and did my whole millennial wanderlust thing and moved to Africa and did a couple other things. Um, I'm from North Carolina originally, Um, went to Duke University undergrad, so proud Blue Devil. Um, But, you know, I'm basically a Chicagoan after 12 years and have enjoyed living in this, you know, very fun and affordable city too as well. Justin, you and I kind of swapped there. So I went to undergrad in Northwestern, started in Chicago. I got my MBA from Fuqua. So, okay, you know, that nice. kind of flip flop a little bit. Love that. Nice. Um, Hello, Dookie. Absolutely. Love it. Jen, what about yourself? Oh, hey, everyone. Uh, Jen Wu, Partner Managing Director, also in the Chicago office. I think Justin and I have known each other for about over a decade at this point. So I'm going to age us both. Um, but I joined the firm in 2009 out of undergrad. So I went to the rival school. I went to U Chicago, mm. um, was here for, I think three and a half, almost four years before business school at HBS. And I always say I never left LEK. I just, you know, left LEK and didn't come back for about four years. So I did my internship at General Mills and then moved there for two years in Minneapolis as well. And so I actually came back to the firm in 2017. And so for the last, you know, five years back at the firm, I've pretty much just focused on food and beverage. And so within that, I do a lot of branded high growth fruit and bev, and then also some plant-based and alternative protein. Thank you for sharing. Uh, I, my connection, I guess, to you, Jen, is I, I was at McKinsey in Minneapolis. So I'm sh- I think our timing overlapped there some. So Such an <laughs> underrated city. I love oh, it. it really is. Uh, I can't beat the, the weather in North Carolina, though, I have to say. Mm. But um, you're both still in Chicago now, uh, holding down the Midwest. Love it. And, and we're excited today to have a conversation with both of you, not only to get to know each of you better, but to understand more about the way that LEK thinks about diversity. Um, and so as we as we transition there, Jen, um, could you just share a quick overview of LEK um, in terms of the type of work it does and the clients it serves and the, the type of roles available? And then we'll jump into the EDI conversation. Uh, definitely. And so LEK, I mean, we're, I think we've got our 40 year anniversary next year. So we were founded in London. I think one of the, the few global strategy consulting firms founded in Europe, but we're 20 offices worldwide now. And I like to say we, we focus really on growth strategy work. And so when you think about that profit equation, we're really focused on, on that revenue piece. And so as part of that, when we help our clients, we often focus on M&A, which is a, a clear kind of acceleration of growth for a lot of companies. Um, and we also just do your standard corporate growth strategy. So helping companies understand where they want to be in three to five years, helping them set that vision, 
and then also helping them with the execution piece of does that take the short the, the, the form of new product innovation does it take the form of new geographies and the way that we're organized by a firm by firm is as you can tell justin and i are both in the consumer practice we've also got other big practices like industrials and healthcare. And so at the partner level, we're, we're dedicated to uh, specific sectors so we can provide that expertise for our clients. Mm -hmm. uh, and let me just ask you, Jen, has that focus for you changed? It sounds like it hasn't from your time at General Mills, but did you dabble into another sector at any point in time? I did actually. Um, so we all come in as generalists. And mm -hmm. I think we're, we're, it's very much part of the culture and it's part of the value proposition to folks coming in. And so the, the typical hiring for us is folks come in at the associate level, straight out of undergrad or after a couple of years of experience, um, or they come in post business school after a few more years of experience. And so when folks come in, we allow them to dedicate to a specific sector after a certain period of time, but you very much come in as a journalist. And so we make sure through a central staffing model to give people that exposure. And so pre-MBA, I had actually done a lot of industrials, med tech, and other sector work. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Well, now we, we really want to dive in in this conversation into the way that LEK thinks about ED&I, equity, diversity, and inclusion. And so probably the best place to start is to, to define it. How do you think about ED&I at LEK? So we define equity, diversity, inclusion uh, through the three tenets. Equity is uh, refers to the proportional distribution of resources based on needs. Diversity, we're all familiar with that one. That's a collective of mixture of internal and external differences. It could be include but not limit, limit, limited to racial, age, gender, neurological, socioeconomic, religious, you know, ableism versus not. And then inclusion is, you know, behaviors and norms that facilitate and nurture differences being seen, valued and respected and just creating a sense of belonging that encourages full participation and bringing your authentic background. Um, in probably the mid 2010s, uh, we kind of started on a, a, a journey in earnest of, of diversity. Um, and obviously that got rehashed very heavily, you know, post summer, June 2020 and all of the social unrest um, mm -hmm. We kind of formed a, a global ED&I committee, and, and, and under that ED&I committee, we developed, you know, specific visions and, and guardrails and, and guidelines of what we wanted to work on. Um, those six guidelines and visions are that, you know, LEK will be a workplace environment where all staff feel safe to be their authentic selves. You know, we're all accepted, respected, valued, protected globally. It's not just a U.S. mandate. It's a global mandate, regardless of, you know, where they are, where they come from, or what they believe. We also believe in having affinity groups, you know, our employee resource groups. We want those to become highly valuable global employee groups that are driven by, you know, a four seam framework around culture, career, community and clients and just strengthening all four of those. We also want to evaluate staff representation to define diversity, then set goals aligned with global priorities based off local environments. So for each region, we want to have set goals and, and journeys as far as how we define diversity and where we're trying to get with it. We're committed to strategic global initiatives focus on recruiting, retaining, and developing staff from historically underserved populations, wherever that may be or whatever that's defined as. We want to develop structures and systems to ensure that you know, we're represented internally and externally in our communication as a moral organization with integrity and ethics. And then lastly, we're trying to establish relationships and, and build partnerships with external organizations dedicated to diversity and social justice globally. Those are kind of our six guidelines and principles, and that's kind of what we're driving our overall strategy and how we define ED&I and LEK. Mm -hmm. That's that's quite a robust set of um, principles and, and information there. Um, so, Justin, if you could um, just put this, you know, to, to put this into practice a little bit more, um, could you tell us and, and, and how do we make it real? How is LEK expanding its talent net to actually catch more of these diverse candidates? What are some of the things that you've been doing and trying in this area? We've been throwing the kitchen sink at it, mm, like everyone mm, else has. Mm. Uh, it's a very highly qualified, but as we all know, a very small pool just based off of history and socioeconomic factors. Mm. Um, so we have invested a lot of money in terms of partnerships with certain groups who help us to facilitate candidates at the undergraduate level and who help us to facilitate candidates at the 
uh, MBA level. Those are our two kind of main source of uh, employees um, is undergrad recruiting and MBA recruiting. Um, so we're active in partnering with organizations. We have specific programs that we host ourselves for undergraduate students and pre-MBA students going into MBA programs as well. Um, we actively are involved in campus hiring um, at certain institutions. Um, we're actively in, involved in some of the affinity groups at those institutions as well to pull in. We do inclusion training also, just to make sure that our staff are aware of you know unconscious biases as they go into interviews. Uh, I think that's very important. Um, and then on the back end, as far as expanding our, our talent, we have a lot of you know recruitment, sorry, a lot of retention activities that we do as well because it's hard enough to get the the sort of qualified pool of diverse candidates, but it's another thing to actually keep them at your firm. So there's a litany of things we do as far as mentorships, sponsorships, and, and retention, just trying to create a community where people can feel like they can be their authentic selves and they can just form a bond because we know consulting is a very hard place with a lot of, mm -hmm. of a high churn, um, but you're more likely to stay in consulting longer term if you have authentic connections. And that's kind of why Jen and I have stayed around for 12 years. We have authentic connections above and below that has made it more than just work. And it really kind of is a family for us. Um, if you don't really have that, you're not going to stay whether you're a diverse candidate or not. And if you're a diverse candidate, it's going to be even hard because there's less of a community. So we're trying to do all those things that involve filling the kitchen sink and more. And we're, we're, we're obviously, it's a journey for us. It's a journey that we probably started in earnest two years ago, and we're a mid-sized professional services firm. So we have a lot more that we can do, and we're kind of uniquely positioned to provide a unique experience work-wise, but we also are uniquely positioned. We're, we're not a big machine as some of the other big organizations have with a lot of FTEs guaranteed to diversity and programs established that have been going for, for decades as well. So we're kind of finding our way out and, and also kind of specifically you know, forming our own path and our own value proposition for diverse candidates that are different from other places too. I think the main thing too is that there's a real opportunity because there's a real focus here. I myself am the first black MD, you know, at LEK in over, you know, the 40 years of our existence, right? You know, Jen's kind of like the first Asian partner, you know, in the Chicago office as well and, and, and one of a few partners here too as well. So I feel like there's a real opportunity because there's a real thirst to bring candidates and push them through. Uh, obviously, it requires you to have the skills and merit to succeed, but there is a white space for diverse candidates where there might not be there in other places as well. Mm -hmm. Well, I think it certainly says a lot to have both of you as partners and managing directors to 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 be the the, the face of this and speak about it. Um, and and as well, I can really appreciate how it's you know we're not only thinking about it in terms of recruiting pathways, but at LEK that you're considering that inclusion training and you're also doing that community building, thinking about the, the full lifespan um, makes makes a ton of sense. Yeah, and we also have to be like authentic and real and honest, right? Because I think mm -hmm. a lot of people also have a lot of smoke and mirrors about diversity mm -hmm. too. And then the reality of what you see when you actually get here is not what's on the marketing materials and the banners and the posters and signs. So that's also how we try to be differentiated. I, as a partner in MD and being unique, I'm always going to be real and authentic. Mm -hmm. And I think that helps people too as well. I'm not going to sugarcoat where we're at, where we're going, and what this place is too as well. Mm hmm well, I certainly know a lot of our listener base is interested in that beginning part of the funnel. How could I get a job at a great firm like LEK, right? And um, uh, especially, you know, those who, who are diversity candidates. Um, so, Jen, I'm wondering if you can take that angle and talk us through how LEK engages in diversity recruitment, whether that's on campus or uh, some of the popular diversity conferences, et cetera. Yeah, I think um, Justin touched on this, but you know, as part of the uh, the, the kitchen sink efforts, mm -hmm. <laughs> if you will, um, I mean, we, we have core schools, um, secondary schools that we always try to go to. Um, and this year, we're, we're going to be back in person, which I'm really excited about. Mm -hmm. and I think you know maybe one of the silver linings over the past couple of years of the pandemic is we've expanded what we would consider a core school that we'll do re recruiting efforts at. And so on those campuses, we very much engage with the career services teams. To, to see if we can bring a diverse pool of candidates you know, into the informational sessions, into the resume drops. Um, we'll also work with student-led organizations on campuses um, that are really the kind of organic grassroots efforts um, in, in bringing students together who, who share that shared identity, um, who you know, would like to learn more about consulting. 
But I think for us, what we've recognized over the years is that's that's not enough. It, it's good, but not enough, which I think is um, the crux of a, a lot of um, diversity programs. And so what we've done in the past is we've partnered with a lot of national diversity organizations for those recruiting efforts as well. And so some of those, those big national conferences like MLT, Management Leadership of Tomorrow, Forte Foundation, Reaching Out MBA, or the MBA Veterans Conference, those are all, all organizations that we've participated at. And what I love about them is they really also provide a lot of that training and informational sessions. So often when we're there, it's a two or three day event and we're doing a program, just walking through what consulting is, walking through how the firms differ. And one thing that we've done that's also, I think we, we launched this a couple of years ago and we, we actually just wrapped up the, the women's one is we, we do a, what we call a pre-MBA program. So it's before MBAs get onto campus and they're you know, bombarded with um, recruiting events and consulting firms coming on. We almost want to level the playing field by giving them this pre-MBA program, which helps them understand what is consulting. Um, what you know When you're looking at different firms, what should you be probing on? Uh, we almost do that kind of mini training. And mm-hmm. so we, we, we do one for women and we do one for underrepresented minorities, uh, which is actually happening later this week. And it's something that, you know, partners, managers, and staff all participate in actively. Well, I can imagine for for interested candidates um, who think that they may fit one of these, uh, you know, diversity descriptions, could come see you on campus at an information session, could come attend one of the conferences that you've listed. Um, anything else that, that you want to point out at this point in terms of where they could go to find and engage with uh, resources or information about LEK and its EDI approach? Yeah, I think, you know, definitely come see us in person if, if you get the chance. Don't be afraid, afraid to reach out on LinkedIn. Um, I, I would say leverage your school alumni associations. I think that's pretty critical, especially as you know, we, we've got six offices um, around the US. And so you, you're getting alumni from a lot of different business school programs and undergraduate programs who are more than happy to help. Um, and then we've also got you know two of our, our amazing HR team that are really focused on this. And so Renee and Yara, um, and I can maybe get the emails out through, through a different avenue, but you know, if, if there's candidates um, who have a diverse background, if they want more information, definitely feel free to reach out to Yara and Renee as well. Perfect. Um, now, there's certainly more that we want to hear from both of you in this conversation. Uh, Justin, we'll pack, pass the mic back over to you. Uh, we, we see on the website, you know, Ellie Kay talks a lot about careers with impact. Uh, what do you mean by that? Sure. Uh, so that means that we're just trying to create an environment where our staff can thrive and they can kind of enjoy long term lifestyle sustainability. Mm-hmm. That means there's day one leadership, responsibility, autonomy through associate, through consultant as far as your work stream and who you manage and who you interact with on the client side um, and within internally at LEK. We have like mm-hmm. short cases and regular feedback that, and that en- enables rapid iteration and improvement. We have mentorship programs, formal on-the-job training and on-the-job learning, exposure to advanced analytics. We have defined promotion pathways. We have compensation tied to performance. All those things allow you to have an impactful career that's a little bit more fast-paced. It's definitely high impact on the client side and as far as your career progression. And that just overall, it's just a a very good value prop to those who are eager and and ready to learn and and have a kind of fast-paced very impactful career. We'll be right back after this quick message from our sponsor. Want to work for a fast growing consulting and advisory firm? Palm Tree is looking to fill positions across its US offices. If you're currently an employee at a top accounting or advisory firm seeking to break into the M&A industry, or if you're a student interested in learning the M&A life cycle through an extensive internship program and boot camp, consider Palm Tree. Private equity clients turn to Palm Tree to identify and solve their most complex M&A finance issues, including carve-outs and challenging integrations. The firm is a trusted advisor to elite private equity firms, guiding clients through the entire investment lifecycle. If you've got a flair for finance but want the challenge of consulting, apply today through the link in this episode's show notes or on the careers page at palmtreellc.com. 
Well, we'd appreciate, Justin, if you could, you know, walk us through what that career pathway has been like for you. Uh, if we rewind the clock and we think about what your journey was like at the beginning when you first recruited for consulting um, and perhaps identifying, you know, what resources were available to support you or not, uh, pointing out how maybe that's changed from the new efforts that you're that you're doing now at LEK. Oh, yeah, for sure. So when I was recruiting for consulting, it was around 2010. Um, mm-hmm. And consulting, obviously, now is a, a very well-known and understood industry. Like, you can get a consulting degree at a school, right, where mm-hmm. they didn't really have consulting degrees at colleges and universities. So it was just a well, a, a, a very much less known industry to, to, to apply. I, coming from Duke, you know, obviously applied for a lot of, like, banking, finance, and then I kind of stumbled upon some consulting roles that I started applying for. And... I kind of wanted to do consulting versus finance because finance is a little bit more surface level to an extent. It's like, you know, let's just drag this percentage across the revenue line and just tweak the numbers to make the model work versus consulting. You're kind of digging into businesses and understanding trends and understanding intrinsically what's going on with the market a little bit more. Mm-hmm. Um, so when I recruited, um, uh, the resources that we had were way less. I think I, you know, made sure I did buy 20 to 25 cases as far as practice so I could be very um, uh, just be a lot more comfortable with whatever curveballs they they threw at me. Um, I went on Glassdoor and looked at the key questions that the, the company's going to ask. Um, mm-hmm. And then I also um, obviously looked at some YouTube videos too about consulting and, and, and how to case and just did my preparation and, you know, wrote out the answers and practiced them and, you know, cased really well to, to kind of join and, and, and do LEK. I did kind of a non-traditional um, college kind of route, so it wasn't through like the normal on-campus two interviews, three interviews, just because it was a different time mm-hmm. coming out of the recession and they were hiring at, at different times. But that's kind of my weird way of how I got into consulting and kind of never left. And obviously it's very different um, being a, a much more well-known and well-oiled kind of recruiting industry that consulting is now today. Mm-hmm. Jen, would love to hear your perspective on the same as you think back about your your you know recruitment journey and career pathway. Yeah, so I was um, the, the the class before Justin, and so mm-hmm. I came in in two thousand nine, and so we were a, a tiny class because we were doing rec- we were doing recruiting essentially in fall two thousand eight, and so for a lot of our listeners, um, you're probably uh, you know probably in high school at that time or maybe even younger, but it was a really tough time to do recruiting. And so I I feel for a lot of candidates who are perhaps graduating into a recession or maybe had their careers impacted during the pandemic because you've got these Mm -hmm. best laid plans, you've got the grades, you've done your case prep, and then a macro event comes comes along and kind of knocks everything sideways. Mm -hmm. And so I think it it was a tough time to, to recruit for consulting then. And also I think as a diverse candidate, it probably just wasn't a... It's always been an issue, arguably more of an issue in the past than it is now, but it just wasn't really talked about. And so a lot of firms didn't have a lot of these resources and kind of dedicated programs to do that outreach for diverse candidates. We didn't really have that conversation directly. And so I think now there are just so many more resources in place. And so I would always encourage people to take advantage of that. Mm-hmm. So in terms of the the way that that thinking has evolved, Jen, and the way that that these resources have have evolved, um, you know, would love if you could speak a little bit more towards, uh, you know, what in your perspective is a is a holistic view of diversity, you know, here in the, the summer of 2022. And, and while you're at it, would love your perspective on what do you think people often misunderstand about diversity? Yeah, I think it's it's a great question. A lot of folks at LEK have, have uh, internally have, have heard me talk about this issue because it's, it's something I'm pretty passionate about. I think there, there's actually a, a metaphor that gets used a lot in um, diversity materials, and it's the metaphor of an iceberg. And so what I love about that is there's so little of the iceberg and its total kind of surface mass that is really visible above, above that waterline. Mm-hmm. And so oftentimes what people misunderstand about diversity is they pay attention to the things that are visible naturally, as is human nature. And so they think about things like gender and race. And obviously those are things that really affect people as they move through the world. But so much more of diversity is below the surface. It's the bulk of it. So some of that is socioeconomic background. 
which is one thing that really isn't discussed a lot in consulting because the, the industry skews a certain way. Um, and so I think it's important for us to have that holistic view of what a diverse candidate would look like. And I think the other thing that's perhaps not misunderstood, but isn't discussed as much is I think when it comes to diversity, first and foremost, and I cannot emphasize this enough, is there's what's the right thing to do. And I think sometimes people hesitate to really you know, connect that into, I mean, unpleasantly, it's called the business case, right? Um, or you know, truly why does it matter? And I think sometimes we, we think that we no longer need to have that conversation. But I always say, let's keep having that conversation. You know, it's the right thing to do, but also why does it matter in particular for consulting? And so for us, I mean, consulting, essentially, we're, we're hired brains. We're, we're very expensive hired brains. And so we go into organizations and on one hand, in order for us to be successful, we have to hold empathy for the client. We have to put ourselves in their shoes, really understand how their organization works, their business problems, what keeps them up at night. But on the other hand, ultimately, we're here to provide a third party opinion. We're here to provide an expertise about their sector. We're here to push them on their narratives and beliefs. And so you're constantly having to hold two different things in your mind at the same time. And so the reason why I think that's important to recognize about the field of consulting, what makes us successful is because anybody who is diverse has been the other in the room. And if you're the other in the room, that muscle of holding multiple beliefs, narratives, thoughts in your head at the same time is a muscle that you've exercised consistently, whether you like it or not. And I say that because everybody has the muscle. It's just that the folks who are more visibly diverse or diverse under the surface of the waterline have to exercise that muscle. And so I think that there's a real case to be made here for diverse candidates intuitively having more of that training as they move through the world of being great consult consultants. Mm -hmm. Justin, anything you want to add on here? Yeah, I mean, that was such a great answer by Jen, of course. Mm -hmm. I would just say that for diversity, things are obviously misunderstood. Um, a lot of people just stop at women, right? That's kind of what we did at first. We stopped at women. Most people stopped at women. And then June 2020, everyone realized that diversity is more than just women. Um, and there's a lot of fragility having discussions about diversity, especially when it comes to race. Mm -hmm. It It's just what I always tell people is that you have any conversation that you're having about diversity, especially when it comes with race and it's replacing it with women and all of a sudden it makes sense, right? If you're in a room full of guys and then we're trying to get our first female partner and you realize that it's important to have a female in the room and it's like, okay, that makes a lot of sense. Like why would that not extend to other types of diverse groups that you might be a little bit more comfortable thinking or talking about, but the logic holds true. So anytime I ever have any pushback and we're talking about anything as far as unrepresented minorities or race, I'm just like, replace the conversation with women. All right. It makes sense that we would do this because we need more women diversity or X, Y, Z. Do the same thing for race and it kind of works. And that's the main thing I kind of bump up as far as the misunderstanding of diversity and kind of try to push through with that. Justin, do you think that, do you think that um, we're headed on the right track in that sense? You know, your firm at LEK or kind of the culture as a whole, do you think that, you know, in the way that that those people who who didn't even used to kind of acknowledge the the gender aspects that you mentioned now is maybe more of a, a, a well held, you know, kind of equally held belief across many people? Do you think we're headed in the right direction? And we think about, you know, racial and, and other types of diversity. I mean, we definitely are because the ship's moving, you mm. know, whether they like it or not, we're moving that way. I think in terms of gender, and I think in terms of LGBTQ, we, and most everyone is a little bit more forward thinking than they are on race. There's just mm -hmm. always just such a fragility issue mm -hmm. when you bring up race, especially in America. And people obviously are a lot less sensitive and willing to talk and discuss about it in these past two years, but there's still a long way we need to go, a long way we need to go for sure. Mm -hmm. Well, Justin, in this conversation, we've heard you mention affinity groups a couple of times. Could you tell us a little bit more about what those are at LEK and who they support? For sure. We have a, a litany of affinity groups that go across a couple of different um, uh, employee groups at LEK. Uh, probably the, the first most relevant one here is we have a group called Mosaic um, that I helped to found 
five, six odd years ago. That's basically for underrepresented minorities, and they do a lot of um, internal cultural planning at LEK. They support recruiting, um, help to draft a lot of the messaging whenever there's events or, or issues as well, and just help to create a greater sense of community for all those people um, that, that Jen said that have that large iceberg, you know, below below the waterline. Mm-hmm. Um, we have the Women's Network as well. That one's been around probably the longest. Is probably is our first and original affinity group, and that's global as well. And um, it, it's definitely a resource to help push increased gender diversity and gender issues. And they in that group have pushed through a lot of protocols, policies that have overall helped to increase the level of women in uh, our senior management ranks, for sure. Um, we have a pride network for LGBTQ. We have a parents network. We have a vets network. Um, and then we also have uh, a, a network for those that are international um, colleagues called ADA, and, and they kind of help um, to support those non-citizens who are working in the U.S. and just the litany of problems that those uh, types of individuals occur assimilating culturally and then also just the whole entire work process, visa process, and, and, and that thing is always quite a beast too as well. Mm-hmm. Uh, Well, we appreciate the new perspective that both of you have given us here about equity, diversity, and inclusion and the way that you think about that at LEK. Jen, I'm sure that there are lots of people listening who are highly interested in investigating more about the firm and opportunities to join you as a future colleague. So what's the best way, what what are some of the good next steps forward that they should take? Yeah, I mean, on on a very, very basic level, go to our website, check us out. Um, we, we've got uh, a lot of up-to-date posts there in terms of timing of recruiting. And so I think, you know, back when I was doing recruiting, we recruited from very few schools. It was, I think, twice a year. And now the great thing about the recruiting process is we bring in a lot of experienced candidates as well. And so we're on a you know constant recruiting basis. And so mm-hmm. don't be afraid to keep checking the website and just to look at the updated timing, um, not only on when the, re- the resume drop is, but if, if you're on campus, Um, check out when we're coming to campus, come see us in person. Um, And then don't be afraid to reach out on LinkedIn and other avenues as well. Perfect. Well, we have a uh, a little bit of a uh, of a theme in our strategy simplified podcast, we love to get to know you personally as well. So as we wrap up here, just want to ask a couple of fun questions. Jen, if you could kick us off, uh, what's one fun fact about you? Yeah. And so this is a, it's, it's kind of an embarrassing fun fact, but uh, it, it ties with my background a little bit. So um, I, I was born in the U.S., but I grew up in Hong Kong. And so mm-hmm. I grew up there and didn't come back for until college, really, until age 17. Mm-hmm. And so, you know, this was cute when I was younger, but I still don't know how to drive because <laughs> the driving age in Hong Kong is, uh, it, it's 18. So I left for college mm-hmm. before I had that really, you know, that exciting high school period in which you want the freedom and you're, you're kind of fearless. And so I just never learned. And now I'm in my mid thirties living in the Midwest and it's a surprising hurdle to my freedom these days. Well, at least you're in, you know, Chicagoland, broadly speaking, is one of the arguably better places maybe to be able to have access to some transportation, uh, public transportation. But uh, no, I, I, I hear you on that um, for sure. Um, Justin, Oh, yeah. Minneapolis is tougher. <laughs> oh, God. I can't imagine what those routes were like. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Justin, what about you? Do you have a fun fact you're willing to share? Yeah, for sure. Um, I think a fun fact for me is that I am a music listening and music appreciation savant. So mm. I'm like the music snob of my friends at the Spotify playlist with a, a lot of followers, you know, like up to a, a thousand. And I just like to create and collate music and I've always done that even when I was associate you know at LEK you know up through a partner it's, it's a lot much harder because there's a lot more meetings I just can't put my headphones on and build models there's just a lot more talking mm-hmm. and, and managing but real passion for music and um, even though I don't work in that field and you know that's kind mm-hmm. of my fun fact I love and obsess with music what was that app it, uh, like Shazam, right? That can just like identify any song. Are you like a human Shazam, Justin? Uh, not a human Shazam, but I do have Shazam on my first homepage in case I do hear something. <laughs> I can pull it up very quickly. I'm not scrolling down six pages and, and missing it out. But um, the the music IQ is very high. It, it's mm-hmm. very it's very high over here. Mm-hmm. 
So he shares the love as well. Oh, that's yeah. fantastic. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. A little bit too happy. Uh, well, as we wrap things up, Justin, I wonder if you could just talk to us a little bit about um, one mentor who has impacted you and you know how have they impacted you and, and why did you pick this one? Okay. Um, yeah, mentorship is, is very important, Nellie Kay, and I've had several mentors throughout my time. I've had you know, the head of the whole entire global firm be my mentor as far as our sponsorship program. And that's something that we've created to help um, kind of senior candidates, um, diverse candidates, whether that's women or, or URMs, to kind of make it through to the partner role. I've kind of had the head of my sector, uh, consumer sector, uh, be a mentor. But I think probably the most important mentor is kind of like my colleague now and immediate boss, uh, Rob Bolson, who kind of helped you know, teach me the consulting game and, and let me ride his coattails, you know, through the years as he ascended through the firm and, you know, was kind of one of the first people who kind of looked, you know, at me and looked beyond what I looked like and, you know, my diverse background and kind of saw that, like, this person's capable and skilled, and right? And he's kind of one person who I've kind of worked with him over time to see some unconscious biases, but kind of doesn't really see those things as far as race and has been a great mentor. And still a mentor now, too, as a new partner, teaching me the ways of, of being a partner, too. So, and, and mentors are very important. And then when you have a good mentor, it also makes you want to be a good mentor yourself. So, I mean, that's probably one thing that Jen and I probably love doing is not only being a mentor, but being mentors to other people because we've seen what it's done for our careers as well. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I, I, I couldn't agree more. And I think Justin and I have shared uh, a couple of those very senior folks in the firm who've really made the time to be our mentors and sponsors. And that, that sponsorship program is, is one that I think I'm really proud of that, that our firm's established that that's now gone global. And I think it's important to differentiate between mentors and sponsors as well, because mentors are truly, you know, they're, they're really there for the day-to-day advice. They're really there to get you to that next level. Whereas for us, sponsorship is quite, something quite specific. It's sponsorship to get diverse candidates to the partner level, which for us is equity partnership. And so we don't have multiple partner levels. Partnership is equity, which is a really big deal. And so the the sponsors that we do have are very senior partners who are very dedicated to the program. And I think, you know, one, one thing that you've probably heard is Justin and I started in consulting over uh, over a decade ago. And so with that, we didn't always we didn't grow up in a system in which we saw people who looked like us visually mm-hmm. at the top. And so for us, we were. We, we almost didn't limit ourselves to picking mentors who maybe had more of a shared background in that sense. I mean, like I said, I grew up in Hong Kong. There aren't too many um, people like that at, at, at the top at LEK. And so I think it's important to recognize that, you know, when you choose mentors, when you find sponsors, those folks may not have that shared background, but they're more than willing to help and to seek empathy and to really understand where you're coming from. Well, again, we really appreciate both of you taking the time to be able to share your perspective with us today. Before we close out, I want to open it up to either of you if there's anything else that you wanted to add to this conversation. No, I think it's been great. Um, Thank you so much for having us. And also thank you for for prompting the conversation. I think, you know, the fact that we're even having this conversation, hopefully people are listening and and maybe getting something from it it, is a huge progress. Thank you both for your time. Thanks for joining us today. Check out the show notes for the contact information that Jen shared during the discussion. Also there in the show notes, you'll find more information about the firm, the work that they do, who they're hiring, how to apply, as well as management consultants resources to help you on that recruiting journey. We'll see you next time.